Perfection. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikey Sawyer, Miss Fortune! Yeah, hell yeah! What's good? Woo! Excellent. Dude, thank you so much for, for doing this. We really, really appreciate it. If people have been living under a rock and are somehow unfamiliar with your band, could you please properly introduce yourself, sir? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are and plug or promote everything. Yeah, man. So I'm Mikey. I sing for the band Misfortune. We're out of Oklahoma City. We haven't always been from Oklahoma City. Sorry, I'm like fucking with the camera right now. This is uh, a mess. Um, but yeah, dude, we're from Oklahoma City, and uh, we've just been rocking it out, playing metalcore since 2012, man. Hell yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I, when I was doing a little bit of research for this today, I was unaware yeah. that uh, Mr. Mikey Skaggs used to be in the band. We actually had him on the show a while back. Do you ever still communicate with him? I haven't talked to him in a while, but Skaggs, like, basically used to be, like, my big brother. Like, uh, I came up in, in music with Skaggs, and he kind of managed my career for the first, like, seven or eight years that I was around. He taught me a lot of tricks, you know? As I'm sure you know, he's a smart, savvy gentleman. So, uh, picked up a lot from him. Hell yeah, excellent. So, the, the new song is out, Rolling Blackout. Tell me what went into the writing process of Rolling Blackout, uh, why you went with Ghost Killer Entertainment, who are also good friends of ours. And, um... Oh, cool. Just take it away. Whatever you, yeah, want, so, whatever you want to tell me. Yeah, man. So uh, the long and short of it is I've been developing a new album for the last couple of years called Gravity's Rainbow. It's going to be our fourth LP. Uh, I've been writing with Ian Taylor Marchionda, who was in the original lineup when we put out A Spark to Believe. He helped us demo and pre-produce pre uh, A Spark to Believe. And he was integral in a lot of the songwriting and production stuff that went into that. So he's been sending me new songs for a while. And... Um, he sent me a pack of instrumentals, and that was one of the ones in there. It was a track that was called Active Rock, and I, I made fun of this on the podcast the other day, but it was like R-A-W-K-K-K-K-K-K, -K 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 -K, like Active yeah. Rock. And uh, I just had a bunch of titles in my phone, and Rolling Blackout's been one that I've had for a while, and so I just thought that that seemed like a good one that fit with the title Rolling Blackout. And I was like, all right, Active Rock, let's go. So then, um, then becomes the process of trying to form, like, lyrics and an aesthetic around this title and this vibe on the track and so uh at the end of the day i kind of mesh like three songs together to make one song you know because i do that all the time i reuse stuff that i wrote for like pop tracks or you know pop punk stuff and put it somewhere weird like a metalcore or active rock song and uh at the end of the day the lyrics and stuff are kind of about whenever your mental health is kind of going into a downward spiral because someone is like gaslighting you or abusing you or something of that nature. And so, uh, yeah, next thing you know, we decided to put that up as the, the next single. And we're really happy about the reception so far. It's been fucking great. It's yeah, like it, a metal track. Which it, is, it is fantastic. We'll play it here in a second. I know uh, when we talked earlier, you asked if we could if we could do a little little smoking on this show. So uh, I would say if you, have, if you have a little something, let's go ahead and bust it out and get a little stony while we jam rolling black out first. Oh, right, that'll work. Sativa, Indica, or, or Hybrid? What, what do you prefer? I'm an Indica guy all, all day, man. I got to chill the fuck out, bro. I got you. Yeah, man. Rolling <laughs> Blackout. If you guys are watching, please support Misfortune. Hit the right. follow button. It'd be a hell of a lot cooler Thanks. if you did. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> I've always felt like you have like a very iconic voice for, for the scene. Are there any unusual... <laughs> like warm-up tricks you do before you, before you play a show or before you're about to lay down vocals in the studio? Like, do you have any interesting, unusual uh, vocal tricks? You know, it's kind of run-of-the-mill vocal tricks. Like, I, I drink, like, you know, the throat coat tea. That's, like, a big one. Uh, I do the lip trills and tongue trills. I'll be like... <laughs> or lip trill or tongue trills, like... <laughs> Is that a Melissa There's Cross technique? Like I think it's Brett Manning. Okay. But I, I could be wrong. Uh, and then another one is like the where you're emphatically telling someone to shush because you're basically breathing from your diaphragm. It's like shh. <laughs> 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 
So if you try to hold that one out as long as you can, it trains you to start breathing from your diaphragm. So you pull those deep breaths from your gut, which is where you got to be singing from. And then uh, sometimes you can mix both of them. You can be like. That's tough. Try doing that. I'm no good at that, but yeah, you you, you nailed it. Uh, and my, then another one. Sorry, I'm just gonna give you one you're more. You're good. You're this good. Is really important. You're good. It's like the vocal fry. It's like it's kind of like the grudge. Like just making that kind of weird noise and all those different like <laughs> way that you move your lips. Uh, it, it unlocks like your throat and your diaphragm. It's it's crazy. I've heard other people talk yeah. about it too, but it's this. I love hearing those little tricks like that. Uh, Mikey, my co-host today is Michaela. Michaela, do you have any questions for Mikey before we jam another song? Um, do you find that it's like hard to hit those higher registers like um, the more you play or is it the training that you do and the exercises that you do just help you hit those notes up there consistently? You know, it took me years to try to figure that out. Um, for a long time, I used to just try to sound like Johnny. I think anyone that's ever heard me can attest to that. I used to just try to emulate Johnny Craig a whole lot. And then somewhere around 2015, 2016, uh, Michael Skaggs actually had mentioned to me and he said, you know, like, you should try just sounding like you. Like, you have a great voice. Just try to sound like yourself and, uh, and see what that does. And so we made the song Die For You. And that was the first time I kind of tapped into that high register mixed voice mixed register stuff and i think that me being able to tap into mixing my head voice and my chest voice is actually what helps me to hit those high notes without overdoing it and then um it kind of just makes my own signature sound where i'm not trying to sound like johnny craig or tyler carter or anyone anyone i just sound like me and ever since then i haven't strayed far from that uh so rolling black that's a good example of just like my voice my textures my you know that's awesome. I love that. Mikey, of, of all the shows that you've played over the years, and I know there's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, tell me the absolute worst gig Miss Fortune ever played. Everything went wrong at this particular gig. Man, I guess it would have been when we played So What in 2017. Uh, you yeah, know, that's a big one. The night before the outdoor stage. Yeah, yeah. We only played for like 15 minutes because our set got cut short because of Never Shot Never, I think. But um, it was crazy because we had some problems with like the wireless mic. There was a lot of interference out there and stuff. And so I just had to switch to like the handheld mic after like the first song because the, the wireless mic I had just wasn't cooperating. And then uh, we just had some issues that day. The wind was pretty bad. And then our set got cut short. So people were really bummed. We didn't even get to play Chasing Dreams. All we played that day was Die For You, The Bottom and like take that shit back to Baxter and we still have like some slaps left to play. So that's probably to this day one of like my least favorite shows. But the night before we sold it out, the Curtain Club, it was a South by So What showcase and we packed it the fuck out. So that was sick. Hell yeah. Uh, one of our good buddies, Ozzy Bear is in chat right now. I know you guys collabed on a track a while ago. What was it yeah, like working, yeah. was, what was it like working with Ozzy Bear? It was cool, man. He's nothing but a pleasure, bro. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. He sent me over a song. It was already ready to go, so I just knocked it out, and I can't remember if I sent that one back right away. But I've been trying to do this shit lately where I send features back like the same day. Wow! Because I want I want that to become my new reputation. Quick with you know? it, quick with it. But uh, <laughs> quick with it, yeah. <laughs> Especially if they already have something kind of written and and going that I I just sing for them. Like that's just a matter of learning the part in about 20, 30 minutes, and then tracking it, and then tuning it, and then just send it back to him. And they're like, "What the fuck? Are you even human?" That's what the last. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. Uh, dude, did you bring some hot sauce? You know, I got some, some in the cabinet. I didn't bring it up. I kind of forgot. Okay, well, that's okay. We if, if, if you're down to go grab it. We I, hot sauce. Oh, because we do it. We do like a trivia segment, but you get to pick the trivia. That's the cool part. I want to know what Ooh. what movie or TV show you've seen the most where if we ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. But if you do stump you, I ask if you take a swig. You did not have to do this, but you take a swig. Otherwise, okay. I'll take a swig. And I have a, a plethora of hot sauces right here. So, it gets hot. I just noticed you're in a weed. I just noticed you're in a weed grow. Welcome to my garden. <laughs> Welcome to my garden. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
I'll tell you what. What what so, song yeah. of of anything in your catalog do you do you do you show? If somebody's like, hey, my guy, I don't know Misfortune. I've been living under the rock yeah. these last ten years. What's yeah. the first song you show them? Besides uh, Rolling Black. I show I show them like the most recent slaps because I, I feel weird showing people chasing dreams anymore since that song is like ten fucking years old. So I'll pull, I'll pull up fentanyl. Okay. If it's okay with you, I'm gonna jam. Like I'm gonna jam fentanyl. If you're down to grab a hot sauce, and think about what Sorry, what yeah. trivia topic you'd like, and then we'll we'll pick a movie or TV know. show. What you got? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Any so. particular movie or just the whole franchise doesn't matter. Franchise. I don't give a fuck. Oh, we're gonna stop you. We're gonna try. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm gonna get the hot sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. It's so good, dude. Yeah, that's a catchy one. Do you have a so Do you have a particular talk about that one? I was gonna say, do you have a particular producer that you that you frequently work with? I know you said that you can kind of you know do do your thing and then send it back, but do, when it's time for like the full album recordings, do you do you constantly go back to the same producer or somebody that you prefer? Nah, bro. I've been collecting these producers out here like Infinity Stones. I love I'm it. Joking about <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> I worked with Andrew Wade, Chris Crummett, Joey Sturgis, Taylor Larson, Kevin Lively, like, e like a lot of freaking people, dude. But, like every album now kind of has its like own like choose your adventure story where it's like every song is like a different path you can go down, a different sound, a different producer, different writers, different bands, members, all that. So we just we just keep it eccentric, you know. I can dig it. I think we're gonna get you on this one right here. Harry Potter trivia. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck. In the Goblet of Fire Part Two, this is a long question, so bear with me. During the second. Wait, Goblet of Fire Part Two. Is there not a part two? No. Oh, it's part two of the question. I'm sorry. So it's in the Goblet of Fire. I stand corrected. My bad. Yeah, I think you gotta drink some hot sauce for that one. Shit. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I totally will. I totally will. Let's try this one more time, though. In the Goblet of Fire, during the second task, Harry uses gillyweed to allow him to breathe underwater, while Fleur and Cedric use the bubblehead charm. But how does Victor Crumb accomplish the task? That is correct! Oh, yeah. That is correct! Well done. Oh, that was good. I love that. Oh, that one's whack. That one's whack. We gotta spin it one more time. Hydrate just means drink some water. And that's whack, so we, we gotta spin I don't it one more time. water, so I'm just gonna hydrate with some hot sauce. There you go. Cool. Oh, nice. Nice. That's better. That is better. Uh, Michaela, do you have another question for, for Mikey? Um, what bands have you been jamming lately? You know, I wonder if I can open another. Can you still see me if I do that? No, we cannot can see, see you. right now? We can uh, hear so you, but we can't see you. I was going to look at my uh, fucking Apple Music, but I guess I can just say... Um, damn bands. Um, or maybe something. Really maybe there's something that you were jamming that influenced the sound that became Rolling Blackout. I know you said you were sent the track, but and you picked it. But okay, uh, Rolling Blackout. It's coming from a lot of like country influence and shit. Like uh, I'm from Oklahoma, and so Garth Brooks is like a superstar here. He's like one of the greatest selling artists of all time. I definitely listened to him a lot as a child. So I'll bring in a lot of those like country inflections and like themes and stuff into our music, like Rolling Blackout or the Lightning Strikes or whatever, because he's got that song The Thunder Rolls, you know. Mm. Uh, so shit like that. Uh, I know that's really off the wall. But and then Drake, I listen to a lot for the lyrical content, the production, and the hit making abilities. He's the highest selling artist, you know, streaming artist of our time. So if you want to be great, you know, you got to study the greats. I look up to Drake, you know, in his music. Uh, the Weekend is where I get a lot of the little vocal licks and runs and stuff and, like, <clears throat> cool textures and everything. And then, you know, Johnny Craig was a big influence for a long time. Not so much these days, 
but I, uh, like I said, I'm just trying to sound like a mix of all the things I love and make the kind of music that I would want to listen to if I was going to listen to my favorite band. I'd, like, say, I, like my I'd say you're killing it, and I hear the influences in, in your voice and in the music, so you don't change, man. Yeah. Do exactly, keep doing everything that you're doing. It's, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Um, let's see, uh, of, of all the, of all the places you played, kind of like the opposite of the question I asked you earlier, where, where is the most fun gig or country that you've ever played and what particular show? Like, let's say, let's say 15, 20 years from now, you're, you're retired, you're talking to the kids and you're like, this was the best show I ever played. Damn, that's hard, man. <clears throat> uh, can I say an example, like when I wasn't even in Misfortune? Sure. Uh, so let's see. When I was like 17, I was filling in for this band, Close Your Eyes, and we fucking played Bamboozle, and I was 17. So like, I feel like that's just something I'm always gonna remember. Like, that shit was crazy. And then as far as like misfortune, it would just be like the countless times that we played sold out shows. Like, I don't ever, I don't think we've ever played a show that wasn't sold out, except for one time we headlined in McAllen, Texas. At like a fucking thousand cap room, and it was still like two or three hundred people there, back in the like Spark to Believe era. So I don't know. I'm really proud of just the pull and the impact that we have on our fans and shit when we do play live. Like, there's people down in Florida that still talk about whenever we played the show in Jacksonville. I think it was with uh, Hands Like Houses, and they're still just like, "Fuck, bro, the time you guys played in Jacksonville, like, like blew our dicks off," you know? <laughs> Hell and that shit really. Drives like it really does that is awesome hell yeah if if you had uh let's say let's say you guys are currently not on a label right now i know you've bounced around from Sumerian to triumphant but are you're currently not on a label right now uh we did go through a stint of being independent through like our self-titled album and shit but we actually just did a one-off deal with greg so okay cool working with uh, life or death awesome yeah hell yeah um if if hypothetically Greg's just like, here's ten million dollars. I don't know why, but here, 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 now you have ten million dollars. What are some just like toys yeah. and goodies you would just spend the money on, uh, just to like treat yourself? Oh man, probably just stuff for like the live setup, like you know, banners, visuals, uh, just cool shit, um, bandwagon, stuff like that, where we could just really do this shit all the time and live in that thing, you know. Stuff that levels up the show, levels up your career. I dig it. Yeah, lights, production. You know, we already have a sound guy that, like, mixes our sound and shit. That's a huge investment in its own. But just the more we can put behind that and the more we could give back to the fans, I guess, when we do play, that would be what would make me happy. You know? uh, Michaela, do you have another question for Mikey? I've almost got the second trivia question ready. One more second. All-time favorite album. Uh, the first or, thing that popped or top five. Ooh, top five, okay. Uh, the first album that popped into my head when you said all-time favorite was A Day to Remember Homesick. I feel like that album had such an impact on me. I mean, yeah, that was that crazy. Was huge. That one is, that one is pretty yeah, damn good. Yeah, it me at that time in my life. <laughs> yeah. And then probably right after that would be like uh, Amorosa self-titled. That definitely was very formative in the years of me learning my, how to use my voice and sing shit and then um probably what was me numbers would be like number three as far as just like influence on my you know sound and style uh and then who else Fuck. um yeah, i had this and you and you've worked with with tyler the tyler uh from what was me in the past uh which i think was you guys what that was your first single right with misfortune yeah that was shortly after he departed from Woe Is Me. I hit up Tyler and sent him the song. It was called Shoelace at the time. It was just a guitar pro demo. And I was like, hey, here's the song. I think it's fucked up how, like, Woe Is Me is treating you with that song or whatever. And uh, we want to, like, help you write a song, like, in response to it and put it out. And so I sent him the track. He loved the song. He said, maybe change the key to B minor because he was feeling that key. Uh, I sent him the track. You know, we went through a couple passes with that. And then... uh yeah turned out pretty cool uh i forgot what else i was gonna say hell yeah shout out to joey yeah, no, sturgis was sturgis is like, on production too. on that one too i, I believe 
So it was, uh, Sturgis mixed it. It was a self-produced track. Um, and then Sturgis mixed and mastered it. And then Tyler actually didn't like the master or mix or whatever that Sturgis did because he didn't like how it sounded. And so he decided to have Lofile actually mix the final version that came out, which is Ty Accord. And he mixed the version that we actually ended up releasing. But then even on the day it was supposed to be released, the song still wasn't like approved or anything. It just had been so long. People had been waiting for it so long. We just finally had to put it out. And it had leaked already. So we were just putting out an alternate version anyways. And it just became this whole fucking thing. That song, though, like the re-upload is crazy because we deleted that song. And, but like the re-uploads are crazy, man. Hundreds of thousands of views on the re-uploads. Like, what the fuck? Wow. That was our first song. Wow. Yeah. That's and that was how Ash uh, from Sumerian reached out to us because he, he heard about that song, found that song, and was like, what's up? What's up with you guys? Mm-hmm. I, I know there was kind of like a weird falling out with Sumerian. Are you, do you still communicate with Ash? Are you guys still buddies? Yeah, like everything's chill as far as that. I think just the, the damage had already kind of been done at that point, and we just had to just go our separate ways, and that's totally cool. And they gave us a career outside the label. They let us continue doing what we do. And, you know, we still got to check in with them every now and then for accounting or whatever and see, you know, but, uh, yeah, they've still been in our corner. I mean, but over the years, we try to do our own thing and just use the the opportunity that they gave us to try to make our own career. Because at a certain point, it felt like we weren't even like the best fit for Sumerian. You know what I mean? Hmm. Well, I think this could be the most important question we've asked all day. In the Order of the Phoenix, what covers the walls of Umbridge's office? I think it's like pictures of cats or some shit. Mother f- That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah! Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> it says China plates with moving, meowing cats. <laughs> yeah. Well done. You have definitely seen Harry Potter more than once. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll bust out uh, the Death Valley ghost pepper. <laughs> are, are you a fan of, of a good blah? And being a, a, a metalcore artist yourself, are you are you a fan of a good blah? Yeah, I can go for a good blah. I don't know. You're a fan of a blood. Oh, you're good, man. I missed everything after that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was saying I could go for a good blood. You could go just, for a good um, blood. I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, I don't know if I can do it. Do it. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't asking you to do it, but if you'd like, you you could take it away if if you want. What if we all do it? Let's all do it. <laughs> One, all right, all right. two, three. Blah. <laughs> Blah. Hell yeah, I love it. That's a memory I'll always remember right there. Yeah. The quad yes. the blusky. <laughs> Hell yeah. So dude, uh what what do you have planned for, for 2023 that you're allowed to tell us? I know sometimes some stuff can't be told for promotion reasons, but what are what are you allowed to tell us that, yeah. that's that's planned for twenty twenty three? I'm pretty open and ready to talk about it, man. Like, we got a new album coming out, Gravity's Rainbow. I'm so fucking hyped on it. We've been teasing it and hyping it up since January 2021, which is when we technically started working on it. Because this was the first time uh, that I'd ever started really completely from scratch. Uh, But then at the end of the day, once we got into the writing process and Ian was sending me examples and stuff, we ended up bringing back a lot of stuff that we actually didn't use for A Spark to Believe. So it was kind of awesome, like, I'm bringing, like, literally that shit back. Uh, and I'm really hy- hyped on that. Like, All the White Lives in the World, that was a song we brought back from, like, 2013 that we, re- you know, reproduced in 2021 and we're putting it on the new album and stuff. But, uh, yeah, just starting over, having a fresh perspective, and then trying to come up with an album that's called fucking Gravity's Rainbow, you know? What the fuck is that? It's- so... It sounds we like it sounds like a year. periphery title or something like that. I feel like there's a song by them that's similar. But uh, what is what is the meaning behind Gravity's Rainbow? Can you elaborate on that? Um, it's really just a you know, 
ethereal vibe, eccentric vibe, um, trying to just do something that's a little bit out of the box for our typical sound, but then you're still going to hear those reminiscent, you know, misfortune things that are going to make it a misfortune album. And uh, it's a deluxe, you know, version. There's 13 tracks on it. Uh, we developed every song. Like, that was the thing. We self-produced it, and then we just had it mastered by, like, a Grammy-level, you know, engineer. He's, like, nine-time, you know, fucking platinum Destiny's Child, Elton John, wow. Usher, Aretha Franklin, Pink, Rage Against the Machine. Whoa. So, like, this shit's about to be low-key hard as fuck. Going all in. I'm excited. Now I'm, I'm extra yeah. excited. Hell right. yeah. It's juicing oh, me yeah. up right here, bro. You're juicing me up. I, I like it. Uh, <laughs> what, do you have any any crazy uh, Christmas or, or New Year's plans? You know, I, I might play this pool table. It's got Christmas lights on it right now, but I play some pool, man. You're, you're a pool shark. You're a pool oh. shark uh, on, on the side hustler on yeah. the side. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Pool, uh, poker, I love it all, man. Love it all. Very cool. Um, okay, we'll do we'll do a couple more questions, maybe maybe, uh, and then we'll go from there because we were not able to stump you on Harry Potter. I'm, I was surprised, oh. but uh, okay. What's yeah, a, what's yeah. a final question you have for for Mikey? I'm gonna rip it one more time with that. Favorite it, favorite munchies when you're on the road. <laughs> Good one. Okay. Man, that's tough, dude. I'd have to say probably like hot Cheetos, honestly. I love some hot Cheetos. So good. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. This isn't really a munchie. I know you didn't ask me, but this isn't really a munchie, but I'm I could eat chicken wings. I wouldn't make it to 50, 60 years old, but I could eat chicken wings probably <laughs> four or five times a week. I love buffalo wings so much. It's like my favorite food. Like with the bone in? With the bone in? Flats bone in. Let's go. I like to be able to just okay, go so really push nice it and all the meat just. This is some heavy shit right here, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of off chicken right now because the other night I. Uh... Dude, I was eating this shit that I didn't even know had bones in it, bro. And I think a piece of it, the chicken bone, broke off, and I swallowed that shit, bro. And I felt it happen, and I was scared. Oh, I was scared. You felt like a splinter, like in your in your throat and like in your yeah. esophagus and stuff. Uh, that sounds yeah, painful. And it was terrifying because I didn't know what to expect or like what to from it. But uh, yeah, so chicken with bones in it right now is not cool. <laughs> We're going boneless nuggets if we go to Applebee's. In, uh... <laughs> yeah. no, it ain't boneless. That's cool. To me, it's all about the sauce. I'll eat it anyway. Boneless, bone in, bone out. Doesn't matter. Uh, Mikey, I have a couple more questions for you, and then we'll let you go, sir. But this is kind of this is for real, a serious one. What is what is a piece of musical advice that you could share with us for for maybe someone that's in a band that wants to be in the position that you're in? A, a, a piece of musical advice that either a somebody gifted you in the past that that changed things made you take your career more seriously or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career you don't want a starting up band to make okay yeah i would definitely say just to like you know free your ego a little bit because i used to be very uh close-minded and I feel like over the years and through collaborating with new people and working with new people and just having an open mind has opened more doors and more opportunities than if you're trying to be like too cool for school you know mm -hmm. so at the end of the day I would just say just keep an open mind and be open to collaborate with other people and hear other people's advice and uh, you know follow the playbook a little bit like, there were some times where I didn't really do that. And so, you know, I could help another band avoid those pitfalls or struggles. I feel like that's where I could be of service. Hell yeah, I think that's that's some, some great advice for sure. Uh, well, dude, yeah. we, we look forward to, to the album coming out. Rolling Blackout's fantastic. Thanks for joining today. Thanks for uh, getting stoned with me and Michaela real quick and uh, just chit-chatting. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. Uh, please come back anytime you'd like. We had a blast. And uh, cheers, man. Thank you so much. I will, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys for having me on. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, Mikey Sawyer of Miss Fortune. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. Cheers and happy holidays, man. Thank you guys.